Hello, in this lecture, we are going to discuss total origin and the historical background of South Asia. We are going to divide the historical South Asia into the following period, the pre-Aryan period, the Hindu India, the Islamic India, the British India, and independence and partition. The pre-Aryan period, prior to 1500 BC, there are evidence that uh, South Asia was populated by ancient humans two million years ago. There are also evidence that uh, modern humans arrived in South Asia from Africa 70,000 to 50,000 years ago. These are the small bands of hunters and gatherers and uh, here is a kind of a picture of rock paintings done by those hunters and gatherers 10,000 years ago. And these rock paintings were discovered in present-day central India. Agriculture occurred in South Asia around 7,000 years ago in the Northwest, mainly in the Indus Valley area. And this is what we call the Indus Valley Civilization. Indus Valley Civilization lasted from 3500 to 1500 BC and peaked around 1500 BC. This map shows a variety of sites of Indus Valley area where you see different communities. The two largest communities are found in Harpa and Mahakadero. At their peak, Harpa reached 25,000 people, and Mahakadero, even bigger, reached 40,000 people. This was believed to be a city building civilization. This picture shows a variety of uh, city blocks, uh, residential areas, and neighborhoods, pretty, pretty much like what you would see today in urban area. And this is an area view of a block very similar to today's city grid system. People also find evidence of a very diverse agriculture. There are all kinds of uh, uh, crops, wheat, and rice, uh, cotton, sesame, also all kinds of animals are raised, uh, pigs, sheep, and goats. There are also evidence that water management was very important at the time. You see, uh, the, those pictures show the drainage system, the water well, great bath where, where people would take baths together and a bathroom. And this picture show granaries which may be used to store grain. People believe that the people who have great, created the Indus Valley civilization are primarily some dark skinned people. But also people have uh, find that there are other racial groups there as well at the time. So it's not just uh, a civilization built by one single group of people. There are also uh, evidence that uh, there's all kind of religious and arts activities. So this is uh, the uh, uh, residence that the people guess that it may be uh, occupied by the priestly uh, class. So that is evidence of some kind of religious activity. And this is a statue of a priest a king. And those are uh, believed to be a seal. And those seals are kind of artwork. But uh, they are used in trade to indicate the family uh, ownership. And this uh, finger rule uh, is a uh, show a dancing girl. Many of those uh, cultural and religious elements uh, were also found in later Hindu culture. For example, uh, in Hinduism, we know that there is this uh, god called uh, Shiva, 
and the people believe that in a Hindus, uh, in Indus Valley, they have found a prototype image that shows this uh, origin, uh, the origin of the Shiva as a deity within Hinduism. Now later, it's found in uh, Hinduism. There are also writing system in Indus Valley civilization. On these seals, you see some kind of writing system but uh, nobody can decipher what they mean. In this valley civilization was destroyed, uh, was destroyed thousand years ago, and to this day, people try to answer some questions, such as, who are these people? Who are these people who created the Indus Valley civilization? And people generally believe that they are related to those uh, indigenous people who arrived in South Asia from uh, Africa, but who exactly uh, they are, and that uh, we don't know. Another question is what and what who destroyed the Indus Valley civilization? Is that the climate change or the war that occurred between the newcomers and uh, those people who live in the Indus Valley, or the combination of the two? So we really do not know the clear answer to these questions. The Hindu India, 1500 BC to 1206. During this uh, long period of time, we see the invasion of the Aryans. The word Aryan actually means a, in, in a, a language. A, it is an Indo-European language. So the invasion of the Aryans actually means the invasion of people who speak Indo-European language. These are the people who are from Central Asia and uh, Southwest Asia. Before they arrived in South Asia, they were nomads. They herd animals. Also, they fought wars. But after they came to South Asia, gradually they become agriculturalists. And people uh, gather that there may be some kind of interaction between these newcomers and the people who live in the Indus Valley. And from there must be some kind of interaction between the newcomers and the people who are in Indus Valley. From those kind of interactions, those newcomers may have learned uh, agriculture. But they do not stay in the Indus Valley. They push towards the Ganges Valley to create their own uh, agricultural land and civilization. Through a long period of development, we see the emergence and the development of Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism. We also see uh, the caste system that emerged within a Hindu related culture that basically served as the internal division of Hindu society. Politically, we see a long period of a political fragmentation in uh, ancient South Asia. In this context, it is very different from uh, the Chinese, uh, ancient Chinese history. In ancient Chinese history, we see a long lasting dynasties and empires, and one dynasty is uh, after another uh, for a long period of time. But in the context of South Asia, we see political fragmentation. This map shows around 600 BC in Northern Indian and part of the Central Indian, we see the land was divided among 16 major uh, kingdoms, nation-based uh, nation uh, kingdom. So that really shows the political fragmentation. Another cultural influence during this period of time came from uh, Europe with the invasion of Alexander the Great in 326 BC. He conquered a uh, few kingdoms in the Indus Valley. Also, he fought a political alliances with a few kingdoms there. His original plan is 
to push from the Indus Valley to the Ganges Valley, but his soldiers revolted. They had been fighting wars, had, they had been a campaign for more than a decade, and all soldiers were exhausted, they were tired, they want to go home. They, want, they, they do not want to fight anymore. So Alexander had to give up his plan and turned south, went back to uh, Persia through uh, in this valley. A few years later, he died in Persia. But his uh, action in um, uh, in Punjab area in in Indus Valley uh, created this uh, huge empire that uh, forged this uh, big um, empire that connect Europe with with Asia for the first time in uh, human history. Few years after the uh, the invasion of Alexander the Great in South Asia, we see the emergence of an empire. Moya Empire in northern India. A particular ruler of Moya Empire, Ashoka, became really, really powerful. He was a very able warrior. He fought many bloody wars, con conquered many kingdoms. Eventually, he largely unified almost the entire South Asia, the entire subcontinent, under a single political authority. But after he fought this, this uh, a battle, uh, fought this uh, battle to conquer a uh, kingdom in South uh, India, he had a change of heart. He converted to uh, Buddhism. Also, he sent out missionaries to different parts of the world to spread the message of Buddhism. He also sent his children, his daughter and son, to Sri Lanka. To spread Buddhism, he erected some uh, Buddhist uh, uh, temples during his time. This uh, lion pillar of Ashoka was adopted by uh, Indian nation as a national uh, emblem. So Ashoka was a well-respected uh, ruler in the history of uh, South Asia. Was well respected by people in India. After the death uh, of Ashoka, uh, uh, this uh, Moya Empire very quickly collapsed. So uh, different parts of India uh, practiced a uh, uh, variety of religions where uh, Buddhism is really predominant. Until this time, we see the rise of the Gupta Empire. And the Gupta Empire is a time where we see the revival of Hinduism. And uh, since that time, the dominant religion in South Asia again became Hinduism. And this is also a time what we regard as the golden age of culture and art development. Here I listed some examples of cultural and art and science achievement achieved during this period of time. We see the use of a medical instrument and a medical operation on human. We see the notion of zero was invented in mathematics. People also have found that Earth is not flat, but round, and Earth rotates on its own axis. And uh, people also found the road, uh, the Earth move around the sun. And also, they have a way to, in, to interpret and understand the phenomena of eclipse. And uh, socially, this seems to be also a very enlightened, enlightened period of time. And uh, people find evidence that uh, they do not give very harsh pi punishment to those people who committed any kind of crime. They only have mild punishment by fine. There is also free hospitals sponsored by the wealthy people. And this uh, Kalidasa, uh, a great Indian poet and a playwright uh, who lived in this period of time. 